Hi, welcome back to another session on Doc Tutorials. This time we are going to talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and we'll be discussing etiopathology, its pathological basis with genetic focus and also look at its clinical features and diagnosis modalities. In this lecture, we'll be covering these aspects of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So starting with the historical perspective, if you see it was first described by T.R.A. et al. in 1958. He was the first one to describe hypertrophic cardiomyopathy where he found small massive ventricular septum in sub small cohort of young patients who had died suddenly. Uh, Bronwald was the first one who diagnosed it clinically in 1960s and then it as, as since then various names have been ascribed to this disease which include idiopathic hypertrophic subaortic stenosis, muscle subaortic stenosis and of course hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. So these are the historical aspects about the set. Let's take about look into the some of the facts about the disease. It's the most common genetic disease uh, in cardiovascular continuum. If you look at the expression again it has got heterogeneous expression and mutations and the genes are present in various proteins of the cardiac sarcomere ranging from more than 13 genes with almost more than 20 mutations that have been documented so far. The most common cause of sudden cardiac death in young athletes is ascribed to hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's got one is to one genetic inheritance and if you look it constitutes a risk for atrial fibrillation uh, which is one of the important cause that should be ruled out in atrial fibrillation in young. Heart failure related disability can happen at virtually any age. It's one of the cause which causes heart failure at much younger age including manifestations of heart failure with preserved ejection fraction and this is one of the important cause of diastolic so called diastolic heart failure. It has got multiple variants and the commonest variant which is well studied and described is a pical variant where only the cardiac apex is what gets hypertrophied. So it's like a pical hypertrophy which is primarily only the LV apex which is hypertrophied and this is usually found in Japan. A pical variant has got better prognosis overall and these of course have very minimal obstruction though some can have obstruction at the level of mid cavity or apical obliteration producing some amount of gradient. Coming to the prevalence of the disease, it's, it's one of the most prevalent disorder amongst the genetic manifestations in cardiovascular disorder. Previously, it was thought to happen in 1 in 500, thus constituting 0.2% prevalence. But with the availability of newer imaging modalities to diagnose hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, we are more able to pick up asymptomatic patients. And hence, because of that, 1 in 200 patients, which is around 0.5% of general population of adults actually have been estimated to have hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. So these newer modalities like genetic testing, cardiovascular MRI, they've increased recognition of the phenotype and improved clinical diagnosis which is apart from the clinical auscultatory or pure echocardiographic diagnosis. Also prior studies did not take account into the autosomal dominant transmission which has often got multiple members. Uh, affected uh, in the family and hence the prevalence would go up and hence the current prevalence now is estimated to be 0.5% rather than 0.2%. By definition hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is a genetic disorder of the heart muscle uh, uh, most often caused by in cases of 60 to 70% mutations in one of the several sarcomere genes that constitute and encode for the various components of the contractile apparatus of the heart. So it has got basically four important parameters that one should be analyzing and looking for and what constitutes pathophysiological basis and hence the clinical manifestation in these subgroup of patients. One is variable degree of outflow obstruction which is dynamic in nature which is sometime minimal and it can it increase drastically with various maneuvers and activities which we'll discuss what are those that trigger it. Second is the heart failure which is of preserved ejection fraction. So what is called as HFPEF. So HFPEF uh, is basically a diastolic heart failure which is often diagnosed in these subgroup of patients. Despite having normal coronaries, these patients have good amount of myocardial ischemia which is documented by various modalities of ischemic assessment. Also because of the structural abnormality as well as the valvular pathophysiological anatomical abnormalities and the drag effect or the venturi effect or the pulling effect on the mitral leaflet into the LVOT will call, cause non 
uh, opposition of the two leaflets completely and hence it can cause mitral regurgitation. So, when you look at the heart, this is the mitral leaflet and this is the LV cavity. So, if this is LA and this is the aortic outflow, the dragging of the anterior mitral leaflet because of the venturi, the flow turbulence will cause the leaflet non to, not to oppose completely. So, this is the aortic valve. Here you have hypertrophied septum. The anterior leaflet and mitral leaflet though tends to close properly, but the anterior leaflet will be dragged towards the septum and hence this gap between the LV and LA will cause mitral regurgitation. So, this is one of the important parameter uh, or a, a pathophysiological constituent mitral regurgitation. We will discuss as to what are the other mechanisms why the mitral regurgitation is present.